destroy Donald Trump, and both actions were illegal. Uh, and we're now in a situation, I believe, where you're going to see a requirement in the near future for an independent counsel literally to clean out the senior FBI and the senior Justice Department and to go after people who've left office who were part of the Obama team that was so clearly violating the law. What do you make of this massive disconnect? The president mm -hmm. has a State of the Union address. We have great news. We've got 2.4 million new jobs. We've got 2 million fewer people that are on food stamps. The president gives all the, the, this great economic success. People are now building factories and manufacturing centers, and taxes are down. Americans are getting a lot more money starting February 1st in their pocket. He's trying to keep the country secure. You get one reaction from the news media, and you get another reaction, even with the CBS poll and the CNN poll, you know, that shows something very different. What, where, what do you say about that disconnect? Well, I, I, I keep telling you, uh, the elite media in the United States is not neutral. They're not referees. They're the offensive wing of the other team. And the elite media, and you saw some of this in the, in the clips you had, some of which are, frankly, outrageously uh, anti-Trump in a way that's almost bizarre. Uh, these are folks who are so deeply hostile to what Donald Trump is trying to accomplish that they are fully as much a part of the opposition as is Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer. Uh, and that's part of why you're getting this unbelievably biased coverage. Uh, I, I must say, when I watched last night, uh, and, I, and I saw the president say, we have the lowest black unemployment in history, and nobody in the Black Caucus could applaud. I, I thought to myself, I mean, who are they loyal to? If, if they're not happy that their constituents have a job, if they're not happy that the tax cuts really dramatically help their congressional districts, then who do they represent? Uh, and well, I think this is a real challenge to the entire left-wing ethnic leadership in America. We have that montage and a lot more coming up. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you. When we come back, the memo from the House Intel community could be released as early as tomorrow. Sarah Carter, Greg Jarrett, Congressman Matt Gates. as we continue our investigation. Stay with us. is pretty good. Well, Sean, as you know, uh, to answer that question with particularity would violate the terms of our non-disclosure agreement. I can say that I believe that many of the issues that have been discussed in the public You can square confirm I have good reading head. comprehension skills. Can you confirm <laughs> that? Uh, undoubtedly, <laughs> you demonstrate them each and every night on television. All right, Sarah Carter, um, what we see tonight to me is so transparent and obvious Rod Rosenstein wants to look better. He's scared to death. And Peter Strzok wants to look better. Why he's even still working at the FBI is a mystery to me. But you have sources tonight, and you're breaking some new information. That's right. I mean, it appears that there's a concerted effort on the part of the FBI, members of the intelligence community, and the Department of Justice to try to force the president to delay the release of the memo. And they're doing this in an effort to buy time, according to sources that I've spoken with, so that they can leak information to try to find a way to either discredit the memo or, or placate those members of the DOJ that don't want to see this release. Sean, they are terrified about the American people finding out what's in this memo because it does expose members of the DOJ, members of the FBI, and others and it violating... Names. Yeah, and it names names, and it actually shows extensive FISA abuse. This needs to be made public. The American people have a right to see this, and the intelligence people I've spoken with and U.S. officials who are familiar with this memo say this memo in no way violates the intelligence community's uh, standards as far as disclosing anything that would be related to national security. Let Sean, me go this, to is, this is Greg. I think you well, have equally. Let me interrupt right there, Sean. If people yeah, are quick. trying to convince the president not to release this memo, they're not going to be successful. He said on the floor last night when Congressman Jeff Duncan it. was pressing him that he was going to release it. And he said, imagine what would happen if we didn't. So he knows the American people are demanding it. Greg Jarrett, I'm reading Devin Nunes' memo back in response to the FBI. Rod Rosenstein, remember, before, just within hours, there was a, they were looking for these documents for a year. And just hours before the deadline, it was Rosenstein going, begging, pleading right. with Paul Ryan. Don't release it. The same thing is going on today about the memo here. 
I assume you have the same reading comprehension skills that I do. <laughs> right. And what I'm reading is, is that the dossier was used at least in part to get a FISA warrant to... Spy on a, an opposition party candidate in an election year, and that dossier was full of Russian lies paid for by Hillary. And that would be a crime called uh, deprivation of rights under color of law, punishable by 10 years. You can't use a false document to spy on somebody. Or unverified, but it is false. And if they alter the 302 forms, the witness forms, well, that's obstruction of justice. Look, Rosenstein and the FBI must think everybody in America is really stupid. That They're compounding... their felony by trying to cover it up at first you know the pretense of oh you're going to reveal sources and methods they've now dispensed with that fiction and and now they're saying well it's omissions well they're the ones who are responsible for the Submissions. They've been trying to obstruct a legitimate investigation by Congressman Gates and others. On Capitol Hill, which have oversight responsibility under the Constitution. Sarah Carter, let's talk about the altering of the 302. Because this came up in the McNabe firing, McCabe firing. Um, this is yes. beyond serious. You have reporting on this. Can you share it tonight? Mm. Well, what we know is this, and what I know is this, I've spoken to a number of sources who have said that McCabe had actually asked members of the FBI, um, an FBI official actually, to alter the 302. Whether the 302s, those are the witness interviews that the FBI conducts with the witnesses. And who do they want they to alter? Well, I don't want to talk about that just yet until we verify it, but there was uh, one person in particular that... But uh, they believe McCabe had asked uh, the FBI agents to alter the 302s. And I think this is significant. It doesn't mean that they altered the 302s, but even the fact that if they were asked, allegedly, if this actually happened, that is a huge violation. Huge vi violation, Sean. And it's so something that they're going to be investigating. Because we're running out of time. What you're saying is, assuming we got the memo tomorrow, that means the day after, and that means next week, and the week after, that we're gonna find even more abuse than what it is that I'm talking about, right? Oh, absolutely, and, and another very important question here is, when the warrant was issued, who kept reauthorizing the warrant over and over again? Was it based Rod on there is, there is a lot of discussion that it was Rod Rosenstein who kept reauthorizing the warrants based on faulty Matt information. Gates, wait a minute. Th that would mean Rod Rosenstein, the guy that appointed the special counsel Mueller? could have extended a FISA warrant without asking you to reveal anything. Let's say that that's true. Doesn't that mean that Robert Mueller's investigation was predicated on false information based on a false FISA warrant? 
Sean, uh, this is an issue where some Republicans disagree. I believe that the information in this memo absolutely proves that the Mueller investigation is built on a rotten foundation, that the entire Mueller probe is a fiction, that it never should have been started in the first place but for bad acts. Right. And so that's my view, and I, I would suspect that most of the American people would hold that view once they read this memo. All right, release the memo. Let's the American people see it. Release the supporting documents. Methods, sources, national security, beyond that, release it all. All right, thank you all. When we come back, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, Dan Bongino, they weigh in on this growing controversy. Straight ahead.